Well, hello, friends. Welcome back to Commute Talk. It's uh, Friday the 13th today, so we should all be very careful, I guess. Um, but I think it's going to be okay. So today, Lord First writes in asking about starting an operating systems project. He says uh, he feels like he wants to do it and he feels like he has the technical knowledge to get started and it's just asking for some advice, I guess. So thank you for bringing that up. Very interesting subject. You, uh, you guys always bring up these interesting subjects and it's, it's so nice because it's always this stream of interesting subjects to talk about, so I really appreciate it. Um, so about starting a, a big project like that, I guess really it, it, is, it is really, really simple. You just have to start. Um, and I know that sounds obvious, but for me personally, I wanted to build an operating system ever since I was a kid, and I just never did it. It was this thing in the back of my mind um, that I kept thinking one day, you know, one day I'm gonna do it, one day. But truthfully, the way things were going for me, I was never gonna do it. And it wasn't until I actually made the conscious decision to sit down and, and start doing it and start engaging with the task um, that, that um, I actually put myself on the track where, or I put myself on the timeline where I actually do it, if that makes sense. Um, and I think a lot of us um, have things like that, like we have these um, projects that we know in our hearts that they are the things that we actually want to do. Whether it's a hobby project or like a business we want to make or um, just some big thing that we want to build. Um, as programmers, I think you can probably all relate to this and if you are already working on your sole project, um, then you know, super props to you because um, I think it's really important to discover what your sole project is and start on it as soon as possible. Uh, and for me, I, I knew that this was going to be it. I just didn't have the guts to engage with it sooner. And I don't know why. Fear of failure, maybe. Um, but whatever, whatever your reason is um, for not getting started, it's really irrelevant. You just have to get started. And if you say you feel like you have the technical knowledge needed to get started, that's great. Uh, then you probably do, and you can just just do it. Uh, and you're gonna be happy that you did. Now, my favorite advice to give to people um, who want to do operating systems, and this, this applies to all systems development really, but for operating systems, uh, is you don't have to start with a bootloader. Um, and I know that this goes against conventional wisdom or whatever, but you really don't have to start with a bootloader. Um, an operating system is a gigantic project. Uh, even, if, even if you're only aiming to do a kernel, it's still an, a gigantic project. Uh, but most people, they think of an operating system as more than just a kernel. And you gotta respect the, the giganticness <laughs> of, the, of the task at hand. And respecting the, the the hugeness means that you realize that there are so many components in an OS and they can be to a large extent built independently of each other especially if you aim to uh, support something like a POSIX system calls um, or POSIX API then you have even the luxury of being able to develop on uh, Linux or Mac OS or maybe even Windows to some extent and you can just start building your user space uh, in another environment and you can put a kernel underneath them later on when you get to that point <coughs> but you don't have to start with a bootloader you don't have to start with a kernel <coughs> I didn't start with those things started with a file system and um, else loader and a GUI library and I know I've talked about this many times in the past, but it is really important 
to me to, to communicate this, that you really don't have to do things the way other people tell you to. And it's, it's kind of interesting because building an operating system is, is very, very um, much uncharted territory, unlike many other programming things. Because, yeah, you can find tutorials about it and you can follow those, but you're not really helping yourself that much by doing that. You really just want to, you want to get in the boat, grab the paddles and start paddling yourself as soon as possible and, and like get into the routine of looking up CPU documentation, of, look, <coughs> of looking up, <coughs> excuse me, of looking up hardware documentation, of uh, uh, figuring things out for yourself because this is... I don't know. It's a it's a different beast. It's not like uh, like these programming categories where there's a million tutorials and a million videos about how to do this or that. And I mean, there are videos about it. And I'm I guess I'm producing a lot of videos in, in that vein. Although I don't do tutorials because I don't like tutorials uh, for the reasons I'm currently talking about. Uh, but. Um, you, you have to start engaging with this and grabbing it by the, by the horns, you know? Um, and it's the same for any big system, because you can find tutorials and little sample programs for how to do some small thing, but you're not going to find a tutorial on building a system, like a big system that does exactly what you want. Um, because it's not practical to make a tutorial about that. Um, so it would be really nice if we could all get out, get our heads out of this mindset that we need tutorials for things. But maybe you like tutorials and I don't. Maybe I'm unnecessarily negative towards them. I don't know. I have biases. You have biases. Um, so these are just my personal opinions about the stuff, obviously. You know, I feel like I shouldn't have to say that, but at the same time, it's important to reinforce that. Uh, I mean, for me, it's important that I'm reinforcing that I'm just sharing my personal opinion about something, and I'm definitely not trying to tell someone what they should do. Um, and that's another thing I don't like about tutorials is that they they have a tendency to tell you what you should do. Um, there's a very important difference between telling someone what they should do and what they could do. And I like to be telling people what they could do. So anyway, a little side note. Um, but I think if you start working on an operating system, you're going to have a really good time. Uh, it's important though, like I was saying, to realize just what a huge task it is. And, and that means that it's gonna be going on for a very long time. And when I started working on Serenity, I knew that I was committing, um, you know, the foreseeable future of all my hobby time budget. And I'm fully expecting to do this for the rest of my life. Uh, you know, probably at, at various varying degrees of intensity, of course. But um, there's really no reason for me to back out of this project because I really enjoy this so much, and the scope is essentially not limited at all. <laughs> if I want to build some app or something, I can just make it part of the system as long as it makes sense. And if I want to do any kind of programming, I can find a way to do it in this uh, scope here. So I'm setting something up hopefully that can last for a very long time for me and in case other people find it interesting and curious um, then for them too and I don't really know how that part works but it's something that we're figuring out as we go but I guess my point is that if you're gonna do an OS or any big project then just understand that you're committing a lot of time uh, because if you're not willing to commit to it, then it's not going to really get anywhere. And if you 
if you're not gonna be willing to suffer through the difficulties and like the debugging and the trouble then you are gonna give up and don't do that because it's so great if you if you see it through um, but you don't have to do what you want I think it's I mean obviously it's important to to start things just to discover that you don't like them sometimes um, I've certainly done that, started projects and discovered that, okay, this is not as interesting as I thought it was going to be. Uh, and you got to be willing to walk away, obviously, from things. But big projects require big time commitments. And the best way for someone like me, at least, to do big time commitment is being very incremental. So. When I say I'm going to do this for the rest of my life, I don't mean that I have some big plan what I'm going to be doing. It just means that I accept that it's part of my daily routine to work a little bit on this, just like I would brush my teeth or eat breakfast. Uh, I now work a little bit on my operating system every day because it's just part of my life. And Maybe, maybe everyone doesn't have this type of commitment to the things that they do, but I want to have that type of commitment to the things that I do. So, hmm. It's a, I'm, I'm just stopping myself a little bit because I'm thinking maybe it isn't right for me to project the idea that that you have to make XYZ time commitment or um, or effort commitment or any kind of commitment but I think I, I do believe that if you if you want your project to actually get off the ground and get anywhere then um, time and effort commitment is required so that's what I believe Uh, anyways, just getting a little self-conscious about um, about this way of um, of promoting um, what's it called workaholism and um, time effort elitism or whatever. But I don't think that's it. I, I just wanted to stop and think. I don't know. What do you think? Um, can you do these things casually? I feel like you probably can't. Um, but maybe someone does this stuff casually and they actually are productive. I would like to see that. I would like to believe that there are people who can do this casually. I haven't met them, but it will be very, very interesting. Anyways, I'm out of steam, so <laughs> I'm just going to stop talking. So thanks everyone for hanging out with me on the commute and thanks for sending in questions. Really appreciate it and have a great weekend and I will see you next time. Bye.